Today we're doing something different. I've been writing sort of a composition, a script if you will, so I'm going to test market it with you all to see if anyone gives a damn or if anyone has some feedback for me. When a man is tired, he's tired. When someone uses ill will and new technologies to abuse someone's life, it's something else entirely. You see, a mother who's on her alleged dying bed can solicit her eldest son to do things that are immoral. That eldest son can strip away all the lies that someone wants to tell in his mind. But in the end of his life, he will be facing the Lord, who will put him in hell forever. The beginning of our story is that of a child, and that child that has a challenge in life. That challenge he has learned to endure all of his entire life into adulthood. During his years of 30 to 50, he was fairly successful with his family. He had a loving spouse and a pretty good kid who was a little wayward at first, but literally worked himself out to be a fine young man. And after the loss of those two individuals into the spirit world in which they have come from, the man sought to find someone else. For the first time in his life, because of all of his discipline, all of his exercise, all of his walking, all of his simply listening to God, he finally liked his entire being more than any other time in his life. But what he did was make a mistake. He mentioned that to his passive-aggressive mother prior to her demise. And from then on, there was no turning back from the abuse and the assault and the sexual mutilation that the elder brother and his family doled out. The sadness of our story is that that young man had suffered all of his life with a body dysphoria. Most people have something about their bodies that they don't really like. There's probably only a handful of people in the world who are 100% completely fully satisfied when they look in the mirror and they see their suit, that is their birthday suit. When a person has some sort of birth defect, it is visible to some people. When a person has other types of birth defects, it may not be visible to people. I often cite the things that I've seen on the internet from news sources around the world that shows people in Italy with literally wolf-like faces with hair all over the face. And then there's been several incidences of children born with tails, which has been sort of interesting in a way, because we're not accustomed to those types of birth defects. We're certainly accustomed to birth defects and mental deficits and mind deficits that are often called certain special needs that are on the spectrum. A child who's on the spectrum is an educational term that we gently use in front of adults and in front of other students so they recognize that the individual we're caring about and serving in our classroom needs a little extra grace, maybe a little extra love, maybe a little extra leeway, and a little extra firm hand at, t firm ha firm hand at times. When I get a little tongue-tied, I have to apologize, but the story remains that a man was struggling with his life, put himself together, got himself on a spiritual path because of falling in love with a new friend, and after that, his life began to mend. But siblings didn't like that. They didn't like who he was becoming in the God's house above. They didn't like that he was happy and content with his body, and an elder brother decided that he would socially sexualize that sibling. What he decided to do was to lace food in his home without telling the younger sibling. And as a result, when the man would sleep, he would sleep for a very long time. What he did was take that man someplace, to a hospital, to a clinic, and start to modify his body in a way that the younger brother didn't like. And when he looked at himself in the mirror, he thought, what the fuck happened to me? I don't understand this. This is not what I like. Another sibling in that set stole a prescription, a prescription that according to specialists that he spent two years studying with and evaluating himself with explained that he needed for the rest of his life. That lying, theft oriented sibling is the greatest gossip in the world. But she didn't think about how she violated federal law. Neither did the older brother think about how he literally could be labeled a predator, an incestor, or other things. Beyond that, there was additional siblings that decided to play into that. While he went through loss, they decided to use financial abuse on that child. And he really wasn't a child at all. Let's again 
say he was in his late 40s. He simply had lost his loving spouse and loving son in a way he had not anticipated for his life. And when that happens, most people are very much aware that our performance sort of dwindles a little bit, and we go through sometimes some downturns in the economy, or we come up and we face things like COVID or the pandemic. But the people in his life didn't stop to think what it felt like for him for their abuse to go on. They didn't think about what it would look like to the Lord above for their constant harangment and harassment and the things that they were doing in their version of love. But the bottom line is that that older brother decided to sexually mutilate that younger brother's package. Now, as a small-statured person, he already had some challenges, but not really in the bedroom when it came down to intimacy with the girls he loved, but it came down to the fact that he's not one of these guys who's going to whip things out and dance around in a gymnasium or in a restroom or in a locker room with guys. What I'm talking about is real life, that real life brings about people of all shapes, sizes, ethnicities, creeds, and preferences. We also have a lot of people who are jealous of relationships that younger siblings have with parents or that older siblings can't seem to master because they've spent most of their life literally living a state or more away from their, well, lineage. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and while this may be a fictitious story or it might be a non-fictional story, the idea of that is really up to you. When a man is talking about his situation, he is very tired of the fact that then there are people who like to do things in a family called gaslighting. And gaslighting is a way to provide sexual assault, psychological abuse, and emotional abuse to someone in such a consistent way that almost that the person's life catches on fire. It starts to literally unravel because of that sociological, pathological, constant, constant abuse. A part of that becomes something that would be financial abuse or psychological abuse or emotional abuse, but basically what ends up happening is the most important value aspect of food can sometimes get lost in the junk food or the fast food that we often bring home on the days of our life when we're busy or just running around trying so hard to put our lives back together. The gentleman who did all these things to his younger brother is still walking free in American soil. The sadness is that he's gotten all his other siblings to lie about what he's done, where he's been, and how he spent his time. That molesting brother tried to one time suffocate the younger brother in a hug, and it took a lot of strength to push him away. That was a family that sort of liked to do that on a natural basis, that they hug each other when we see each other and things like that, but that's not the point. The point is that someone thought they had the rights to someone else's life. And if you look at your own life, you're really questioning, well, who has rights to my life? Is it a boyfriend? Is it a girlfriend? Is it a guy friend? Is it a parent? Is it a masterful spouse that we barely married and we're listening to their audio chats with? You see, it doesn't really matter how we get the information. What matters is that we understand what the rights are of American citizens and the citizens and populace around the world. Human rights law or Declaration for Human Rights Law gives us all kinds of social graces to pay attention to, especially with regard to human sacrifices or inappropriately stolen services. The young man woke up a few weeks ago finding that his package was nothing like what it should be. And the hard part about that type of abuse of sexual mutilation is who's going to believe him, who's he going to tell, and how is he going to get along at all any well going forward. When I talk about these things, I'm not trying to be a perfect poet or a perfect person who rhymes all the time. But what I am saying is that people in life often make huge monumental mistakes in their life because they just think that God has put them on the earth in order to produce a mathematical lesson for someone that they might consider, well, a little less than or more of a jerk. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And the truth is that people often abuse people in the name of their God. And people often harm people in the name of a, well, less loving God. There's always been that thought that Mother God is more important or more loving than Father God, who is one of war and justice and revenge. The reality is that that man may never be the same. He may never recover because the girls he loved were so stubborn that they wouldn't come to see him. 
and it's possible that other siblings decided to interfere with those relationships in a highly immoral way.